helping other migrant workers who are illegally staying in Taiwan to turn themselves in as soon as possible during the current pandemic because it will help them return to their home countries quickly and at a lower cost. Before the expanded program expires, undocumented migrant workers reporting to law enforcement for voluntary departure from Taiwan will be exempt from mandatory detention and will receive a minimal fine of 2,000 NT and no re-entry ban. If they do not voluntarily contact immigration authorities, they face a maximum fine of 10,000 NT and will be banned from entering Taiwan for one to eight years. Now, what they don't mention in this article is that once this this period ends, uh, and that will be at the end of June, starting in July, they're going to launch a major crackdown, according to an earlier report. Continuing on in Focus Taiwan, Taiwan calls for restraint in South China Sea. Taiwan's government has reasserted its sovereignty over the South China Sea and called on all claimants of the disputed waters to exercise restraint amid rising tensions. In a statement issued late Friday, Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs expressed stern protest and concerns on the actions and statements of some countries in the region pertaining to the South China Sea. The, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs reiterated that the Republic of China, the formal name of Taiwan, has indisputable rights over South China Sea features and their surrounding waters under international law. Now, it goes on to cite some of the reasons why there's a lot of tension right now. In mid-April, a Chinese government survey ship and an exploration vessel operated by Malaysia's state oil company, Patronus engaged in a standoff in waters near Malaysia, which prompted two American military ships to sail near the area. China established two administrative units on islands in the South China Sea, which drew protests from Hanoi. Four days later, the Philippine government lost, also lodged protests. Now, there's a lot of, there was also recently a boat sunk by Chinese and a Vietnamese boat. Now, of course, Taiwan has what's called the 11-dash line, which China also claims now as its 9-dash line. It's basically the same thing as pertains to the South China Sea. Of course, international court has ruled that it, that's nonsense, and it has nothing to do with the, with, the, <clears throat> with the actual territory or water rights of these countries would have under any normal international law. Moving on to the Chinese Communist Party mouthpiece, the Global Times. The headline reads, DPP stirs opinions with water army. Now, this is essentially a largely, this is essentially, it's a, 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 a interview with Cho Yi, which is a former KMT legislator who is known to be extremely deep blue. So it starts out, Taiwan's Internet Water Army. Now, Internet Water Army is a reference to be like water in Hong Kong. I believe that's where the reference comes from. Those of the protesters there use that as a tactic. Taiwan's Internet Water Army, sponsored by the separatist political party, Democratic Progressive Party, which is now ruling the island, has been actively leading the fight in the international public opinion field despite their lack of international horizons. People like, quote, Executive Yuan, unquote, member Audrey Tang, and Internet influencer Yang Huiju, who are leaders of the, quote, virtual army, the real leaders are Taiwan leader Tsai Ing-wen and the New Frontier Foundation, which is under the DPP's Central Party Government Department, Central Party Department. Chiu Yi, former Taiwan legislator and director of the Taiwan Institute for Economic Research, told the Global Times. So this goes on to essentially describe a conspiracy on the part of the DPP to hoodwink the entire planet. I'll go on here with a little bit. A typical example is during a verbal war between Chinese and Taiwanese netizens. Some netizens apparently from Taiwan tried to rope in Thailand and Hong Kong netizens. They liked each other's posts and showed a seeming victory of Taiwan and Hong Kong independence. Cho called the scene a public consensus built on sand. It is like a mirage which looks colorful but is hollow inside, Cho said, noting it is fake public opinion. But it is difficult to make this clear in Taiwan as many people on the island are engaged in using such tools. 
Why does the DPP connive with the water army and even make a fool of itself on the international opinion field? Cho explained that it is because the DPP and Tsai do not really care about entering the WHO, which they know is impossible, nor Taiwan's international image. All they want is to use the pandemic to seek independence and stir up anti-China emotions. The DPP is using anti-China emotions in the U.S. and in the West to generate, to, in general, to create a fake victory, Chiu said. Some Western senators would voice support for Taiwan to enter the WHO after accepting money from Tsai. Never mind that it was unanimous, but... Okay. Taiwan media will hype the act while the Internet Water Army creates the false impression that there are wide supportive voices for Taiwan's separatism. Quote, Taiwan netizens definitely will get excited after seeing these news reports. And this is why nowadays Taiwan youngsters are born pro separatists. So the DPP has to continue to stir up battles, collude with international anti-China forces and encourage Taiwan netizens to join in for spiritual pleasure. The only ones who can benefit from this are the DPP and the Internet marketing companies working with them. So apparently the Tsai administration has bought off the entire U.S. Senate. Moving on, Laura and Cha, as mentioned yesterday, there was a piece on the KMT website, which was a summary of a UDN piece. And <clears throat> Jenna Lynn Cody over at Laura and Cha decided to look more into what exactly this was all about. So, back in March, she ties it in here with an earlier discussion that's been going on, which we talked about a while ago. Back in March, some DPP lawmakers called for Academia Sinica's name to be changed, as Sinica means Chinese, and, well, Taiwan is not a part of China. And DPP party list legislator Fan Yun, formerly of the Social Democratic Party, has been one of the strongest voices calling for this change. So, now she notes that actually the name in Mandarin doesn't refer to China as at all. So this is about changing the English name. Now, Fan Yun made the news again yesterday when she and two other legislators introduced a motion that all elected academ academicians, academicians, <laughs> whatever that, however you pronounce that, must be ROC citizens, and that if foreigners are elected, they should be honorary or some other category. Now, that sounds insane. If you don't know what an academician is in this context, or you think by foreigners they mean non-Chinese. An academician isn't someone who works for Academia Sinica. It's not a job. It's an honorary lifetime title. There's no payment and no research requirement. They can be asked by the government to carry out research, but never have, and they can make recommendations to the government on academic policy. That's it, really. So essentially what this is actually originally for is that they, and it's meant for Chinese. In other words, this is an intranational thing to give a kind of an honor to, to prominent Chinese originally, because Academia Sinica originally was founded in the ROC uh, in China back when they were there, and to give them kind of a, a an honor, basically. That's what it boils down to. Now, old ac academicians <laughs> nominate new ones, and I am assured by a reliable source that these senior academicians uh, often tend to be Chinese nationalists, that is, dark blue, pro-China, and nominate quite a few PRC nationals for the role. Because the nomination process doesn't ask about nationality, this has, until now, been an unexamined process. So, Fan and the others essentially wanted to limit this to people who have the nationality of the Republic of China. So, the KMT went on to basically make it sound like Fan Yun is anti-foreigner. As she puts it here, this makes it sound like Fan wants to ban foreigners from working at Academia Sinica, as it never explains what an academician uh, is or does. Now, what's interesting here is that the KMT is trying to make Fan Yun sound anti-foreign, but what she's really targeting is PRC nationals being nominated for, for this post or this honor. 
As Jenna here notes, what's more, it's the K it isn't the KMT bottom line that Taiwan is Chinese, that the ROC is the rightful government of China, and that Taiwan is part of the ROC. So by that logic, wouldn't they think of PRC nationals as not really foreigners? It seems that to the KMT, Chinese and Taiwanese are the same, but these PRC nationals suddenly become foreign talent from all over the world when it's convenient for the KMT to target the DPP. And finally, in Focus Taiwan, the headline reads, Haircut for Charity. Independent legislator Fred Freddie Lim shows off his new haircut after chopping off his signature locks Thursday. Lim donated the hair to the Formosa Cancer Foundation to be used to make wigs. And I'd be willing to bet a lot of hearts have been broken. All right, that's it for today's program. All these... Articles are up on report.tw. Be sure to hit subscribe and tune in tomorrow. This has been brought to you by the Taiwan Report. For more content like this, become our patron at report.tw.